All right, welcome back everybody. It's been a long time coming, and I apologize for the delay, but we have some status updates here in the Orlando Sentinels second season under head coach Shaq Hennessy, and yours truly, Ben Venu, your intrepid sports news reporter. It's been a while, so I figured I'd do a little catch-up update episode before I go ahead and get some more game data going on and game action. Some big news that so far that has happened this season. Breakout pass rusher from last season, Tanner Malone, has been traded this year. That happened a couple of weeks ago. He is now with the Elks, and we'll go ahead and take a look at their roster, and we'll show you how he's been doing and perhaps why this move was made. Unfortunately, it appears that Tanner Malone was a one-year wonder. He came out of nowhere in his third season with the team and put on an amazing show of 13 sacks, was the team leader, and was, I think, fourth in the league in sacks. But as you can see, that's probably not who he really is. It was just... I suppose a perfect storm because in his rookie year it looks like he played quite a bit only got one sack a second year only three and then completely out of nowhere 13 this year you can see one and a half sacks total that's with our team and his new team the Elks so they traded him for I believe a second round pick and maybe a late round pick as well and I think that was the right way to go. He was in the last year of his contract. He wants to get paid like he's the player from last year, not the player this year. And the future just wasn't there because the Sentinels drafted Houston Madsen, who you can already see is about the same overall, but much more of a gifted athlete. We'll take a look at his numbers in on the season. Whoops, sorry wrong button and you can see he's already got two sacks he's been in the backfield breaking up the running game quite a bit with those eight tackles for losses and he is a rookie so there is some reason to expect he will get better other big news early on in the season star wide receiver well we were down a wide receiver but Perry Wood is kind of taking a back seat as Denal White has emerged as the go-to playmaker. Bradley has been stretching the field and getting open deep, but unfortunately, as we've seen, neither uh, Kiefer Byrne nor Gary Kaplan, Kerry Kaplan, seem to be able to hit him consistently. The one big touchdown play that he did get did come from Kerry Kaplan, but Kaplan's arm is so erratic that it's just not really panning out. But we've had two key injuries. Big playmaking rookie tight end Mark Spellman went out early. Missed four games and is finally back. And he was a big cog of this offense when he was playing. You can see in the time he did play, 26 receptions, 333 yards, no touchdowns. But he is a big playmaker. Also, unfortunately, around that same time, rookie sensation Marquis Wyrick, the Big physical corner with great cover skills and speed. Hoping to be another clone of an Aaron Kershaw lockdown corner. He missed four games and is finally back. So a shot in the arm to this secondary and this defense as it was struggling a little bit without these two on the field. So those are the big player news. The other news is there is no quarterback controversy. Uh, some people suspected that Kiefer Burns' performance this year was a little lackluster, and indeed it is. You can see how he's progressed, or maybe not progressed, over the years. And uh, some cause for concern. The completion percentage is way up, but unfortunately so are the interceptions. But the touchdowns have not improved, and the passing yardage is down. Now he has sat two games. But I have insider information from Sha Coach Shaq Hennessy, who confirmed with me after I talked to some trainers that Kiefer Byrne was actually nursing an injury. He had been sacked and took a tumble and landed on his throwing shoulder a little awkwardly. It 
definitely affected his performance. He just, it wasn't a serious injury. He just needed to rest up. Deep bone bruise. It's fine now. And it looks like uh, there is no controversy. Kaplan was the healthy man, so he had to play. It wasn't enough to put Byrne on the injured list. But it was enough to allow him to miss a couple of games. So you can see what Kaplan has done. Completion percentage way down uh, as composed to Kiefer, opposed to Kiefer Byrne. Two touchdowns, two interceptions, four and 28 yards. So he has the propensity to make the big play, but also makes some pretty bad ones and is not consistent. Star running back Dalton Triplett is the workhorse and has been holding up that end of the bargain again this season. Looking to have another big year. Already has 729 yards on the ground, three touchdowns. Breaking a lot more tackles this year. We're seeing him run with power that we did not see before, and he remains a big cog in the air game. We're not uh, trying to distribute the ball a little more evenly, but Byrne and Kaplan both seem to want to check down an awful lot, and that's something we have to get away from. As we said, Perry Wood not being a breakout player like he was last season. For some reason, they just don't seem to be getting him the ball as much, but you can see what he did last year. He's got no touchdowns, and we're eight games into the season. That is a little absurd. I'm not sure what happened, why he's fallen off. He's been healthy, but Donnell White has been picking up the slack. The rookie that pushed his way up the depth chart, Forced out a veteran from the year before to get playing time, and he is responding. He is making some big plays. We're not getting a lot of touchdowns through the air, or at all. So the touchdown numbers are down, but that's on the quarterback. They are just not hitting the receivers. You see him what Chris Bradley is doing. 36-yard long, he got his first career touchdown last game. And they're rotating him in, trying to hunt and peck where to put him. Parrish McCarthy's been seeing very limited time. Just a contributor when he gets on the field. And Ricky LaMontagne has been a rotational roster piece. You already know about Mark Spellman. The other news is the offensive line. The younger guys have been put in to kind of push the veterans. It looks like the veterans started getting a little cozy. But now the veterans will be returning. Radovich returns the left tackle. Costanzo remains the left guard. Crockett remains the center. Hardy takes over starting duties at right guard. And Sean Beatles returns back to right tackle. Defensively speaking, Steve Cleveland has pushed his way into a starting role with Silas Hatcher as a rotational piece as a pass rusher. Vernon Hunt remains the right end, and Jalen McGowan is the backup. Sheldon Bates is now a three-down player. He was being substituted out on pass rushing, but as we see, he's come on like gangbusters lately with his three sacks recently. He had six sacks his rookie season, which was not bad, considering he's a nose tackle in this 3-4 defense, and maybe the coaching uh, staff forgot just how much of impact he can be as a pass rusher. See Kent Kendall in limited playing time with a bit of production. Sean Stewart, the veteran, hanging around with Bernard Jordan backing him up. London Bates still doing a solid job. Maybe not as impressive as his rookie season. You can see he's got that interception. That happened last game. Still defending passes. Still making tackles, but the guy who has really come on is Denario Blanton. And we're going to have to upgrade him. I think we're going to go... He really needs to improve his field general, so I want to go field general one more time. Ooh, nice. Four upgrades. Agility, awareness, shedding is good, and more coverage. He's already good in coverage. So let's see... Uh, there we go, stats and contract. See, he has already 11 tackles for loss, a sack, and interception. He's defending passes, but he is much more stout in the run game. You can see he's only six foot, 205 pounds, a very small middle linebacker. But he just flies around. The field, and makes plays all over the field. And that's why they like him, and we'll take a look at He's got some speed. You see the zone coverage, 74 
play recognition as good as his man coverage is also 70. So just a gifted athlete, a little undersized, but they'll take the results. But he's he's really sticking his nose in on the running plays. So there you see the secondary. Kershaw, a healthy healthy Wyrick, should give this defense a big boost. Zaire Witherspoon and Virgil Hyde will rotate out as the slot third, fourth corners. We've got LaMarcus Blades having another amazing season. He went ahead and got a dev trait upgrade, so he is now a superstar. I'm going to go ahead and go hybrid with him. Only two upgrades, but big awareness and one for tackling. But yeah, he's a superstar now. Got great speed and coverage. Not a big tackler, but he acts as a zone center field free safety. And at strong safety, Nate Youngblood, really thumper out there, making his impact known to would-be ball carriers and land some big hits. You can see he had 127 tackles last year, 15 for a loss, and still held up pretty well in coverage. But generally speaking, if an offense is going over the top on us, Generally speaking, Youngblood is the one that gets uh, victimized, unfortunately. Not the greatest speed. Wes McGuire, we know about him. The <laughs> trends continue that the man can make, the, make everything inside the 40. Once you get over 50 yards, it gets a little questionable. As you can see, he was 5 for 16 last year, 2 of 5 already this year. But he made a game-winning kick in overtime last week to get this team over division rivals and division winners last year, the Columbus Explorers. It went to overtime, and it took a last-minute kick from Wes McGuire to seal the deal. So we're going to be taking on the 4-4 four and four Toronto Huskies, who are a tough team. And we're going to be looking at them in the next episode. Just going over, we have a... Defensive Player of the Week, and it is Denario Blanton, and if you saw last episode, you'll understand why. 13 tackles, one sack, and one interception. He was a big key playmaker on the defense, so congratulations to him. The offensive coordinator is worried about our next opponent, and why is that? Lincoln Calvin. His instincts are off the chart. Seriously, he might be their best cover guy. Flat zones, hook zones, deep drop in the Tampa 2. It's like they have a giant cornerback out there. What are we going to do about Lincoln Kelvin? Well, we're going to slow him down. We'll do what we can against him, but I agree. Calvin is a monster. All we can do is slow him down. We can't afford to lose sight of him this week. You think you've got a handle on him, and then all of a sudden, he's jarred the ball loose, or he's intercepted a pass. We need to keep our eyes open. Beat Lincoln Calvin's Huskies? Have one or fewer turnovers. Turnovers. Yeah, I can speak. That's going to be a big, big problem for our team that is struggling to get consistent good play from our quarterbacks. Is Kiefer Byrne going to turn it around? Because his future with this team and perhaps in the NFL as a starting quarterback are on the line. I, you can just tell that Coach Shaq Hennessy is not happy. He gave this man the keys to the offense, revamped the offense to tailor it around him, and Kiefer Byrne just has not really responded. So, the free agents, uh, these are all... Virgil Hyde will not be back. They picked him up as he was dumped by the Explorers. Came up with an interception. Well, a deflection that led to an interception against his previous team last week. And it was a big play in the game. Bernard Jordan, another veteran depth piece that probably will not be back. Silas Hatcher is probably one of the more interesting players. He will probably be brought back. That is not a very atrocious contract for a good depth piece. Baber, since he's so young, might be back. We offered him a contract, and uh, he wants some more money, apparently. Same thing with LaMontagne. Carl Young hmm, may or may not be back. Kiefer Sanders probably will not be. Lee Kemp, just a depth power back. And Marcus Cleveland. We'll just have to wait and see on some of these guys. But none of these guys are really pressing needs. 
we took care of all the other guys that we wanted. Scout college players, what are we looking at in the draft? Well, we're looking at all kinds of things. But mainly, I've been scouting the first round just to get an overall idea of where this talent in the first round lies. And then we'll start looking at other players. We Are we looking for a quarterback? Perhaps. Uh, Seth Radovich. An improviser, I think, is a guy that we have our eyes on. His numbers look good. He's an improviser. He's got great throwing power. Better throwing accuracy and under pressure than maybe Todd Reynolds. We don't know what his pressure number is. So some options there. Some good running backs, but we're set at running back. We don't really need any. Fullback, I'm not concerned about. Wide receiver... I think we need some speed at wide receiver. So let's take a look at Dion Sloan. And he is not projected to be a second round player. And that's a shame. Here's a third round, six foot three, six foot one deep threat. And he is not. <laughs> that's pretty bad. Oh gosh. Uh, so we're not really finding much in the way of playmakers. Tight end, I'm not really concerned about. Maybe some offensive line help would be good. Generally speaking, you can find the good players later in the draft, so I'll wait to scout those. What we are sorely lacking, and what I think we really need, is an edge rusher. We need to find some kind of edge rushing skill. we got some guys that could play that linebacker edge rusher position. There might be a couple of options here. Here is a... Smaller man at right end that could perhaps slot out. Ooh, first round talent. Okay. He's a guy to keep an eye on. Finesse moves are good. All right. I like seeing that. And I'm looking for a guy that's more of a 4 3 defensive end build, like 6 foot 246. That's not a 3 4 defensive lineman. Uh, 3 4 defensive lineman is going to be more like this guy, 6 5 3 12. Uh, third round speed rusher. Let's take a look. Ooh, this might be a sleeper. Finesse moves, pursuit, and awareness. I like it. First round talent in the third round. That is definitely somebody to keep an eye on. Defensive tackle, we're good. I, I Other than depth, I can't really see us wasting a high draft pick here. And let's see. First round speed rusher. Wow, only fifth round talent, supposedly. Let's take a look here. We're not going to be able to scout them all the way. But that's we're going to start looking at the outside linebackers and pass rushers. There's a couple of high guys up here, but a run stopper and a pass coverage guy. We could use a speed rusher, but I'm not seeing anybody that fits that mold just yet other... Well, and he's a fifth round talent, so... We'll have to see what we can find def Secondary, I think we're good. I would like to get more speed and athletes uh, in the slot, but we don't really need it, per se. Safety, we're good. A backup player, perhaps, but I'm not looking for any starters. Kicking help, perhaps. But we'll see how things go. Go ahead and do some training. We want Kiefer Burn. John Hicks, you know, the offensive line needs help. Oh, boy. What is medium pass drive effect? Medium pass drive, wide receiver and tight end. This offensive line really needs to get going, and so does the quarterback. I mean, I think our receivers are good enough. Pass defense, cover six. Defensive back and linebacker. Uh, we need the defensive line and the linebackers to get going. The defensive line really needs to get it together against the run game and generating pass press pressure. Let's go ahead and train these guys up. I am using some XP sliders. You can get an idea of that. Um, I think I'm using Matt Dog or Matt Tens. We've got John Hicks getting ready to go up. 
let's see, pass protector, well, that is his archetype, so, yeah, let's get him a scheme fit, oh, yikes, pass block power plus two, not a great, not great, I mean, he didn't really need that, per se, but yikes, and the tight end Terrence Sturm, who was a converted fullback, he's in the blocking role, He's pretty good at blocking. He needs to work on his receiving as a tight end. He's a very good blocker because he was a former fullback. So we've got to work on his catching skills. And we've done that. All right, so there's all the training. I think I've kept you up to date. Let's take a look at what this team looks like on the field. With Kiefer Byrne. Back at the helm with his starting offensive lineman back in the game. Let's see how they look against their defense for just a couple plays. Maybe a couple of series. Who has the upper hand? See if Kiefer Burns starting to look good again under center. Let's go, Madden. Loading, loading, loading. Is the game going to crash on me? Normally it doesn't take... Here we go. Madden woke up. Madden 20. It's in the game. Well, that's debatable. <laughs> that's debatable. We'll just go random. And random. Let's see how things look. See Kiefer under center. Looks like a spread. Man in motion. Back to pass. He's got all day. Oh, looks like it's user. I thought it was CPU. Sorry, guys. That was my fault. All right, Kiefer. Handoff. Triplet up the middle. Good gain. Dalton Triplet is going to feature heavily in this offense, as usual. Going to hit him out of the backfield. In stride. Great catch. Bullet pass. So Chris Bradley might have been open a little deeper downfield. Oh, uh, off the edge. We'd like to see that. It looked like Zaire Witherspoon with a sack. And this defensive line is starting to get... Well, that's Zaire Witherspoon again. They're just sending him on the blitz. Oh, bobbled around. Incomplete. Oh. And there's Spellman making a big play. Big tight end Mark Spellman has the agility of a wide receiver. Size of a tight end. On the sideline, dangerous pass. Kiefer Byrne didn't read that one well at all. Fake on the sideline. Oh, and he can't haul it in. Looks like Danelle White, number 87. Couldn't come up with a reception. Over the middle, nearly intercepted. Is that Denario Blanton, number 58? Oh, Denario Blanton on a blitz. We're going to have to clean that up a lot because this is happening far too often. There's Triplet off the right side, getting a little bit of room. So it looks like the running game has the advantage on the offense so far. Pass over the middle and not batted away. Intended for, look like, Chris Bradley. Deep ball. Jump ball, he's got it! What a catch! Chris Bradley for a touchdown in the end zone, going over Aaron Kershaw, of all people, the shutdown corner. So maybe there is some hope that this offense can get things going. It's going to be a tough, tough, tough matchup against the, Wash or the Washington Huskies. The Toronto Huskies. <laughs> the Washington Huskies are the college football team. Also like their jersey and their team as well. Who doesn't like Huskies? I used to have one as a kid. That was my first dog. So in the next episode, I think 
we're just going to go ahead and get into the game. We've played the Huskies before. You know, they're a tough team. they got some good defense, good offense weapons as well. I'm just going to get into it. I don't want to delay too much. So you guys, thank you. I want to give a shout out to Dakota, who's been keeping me up to date in his comments and his love for the Orlando Sentinels and this series. I really appreciate him. Thank you, Dakota, for everything. Uh, I'm doing this for me. <laughs> Because it's fun for me, um, but I'm doing it for you, too. You seem to really love this idea. I'm glad you do. I wish there were 20 more like you, but I'm glad to have you. And, uh, yeah, we're coming up with game day. I don't know if I'll get it done today. Maybe tomorrow. I got a little bit on my plate today. There's a couple other things going on. Uh, got somebody in the family that just recently had a major shoulder, shoulder injury, and they are kind of the person that's the glue of the family. So we have to kind of take care of this person and uh, start doing a whole lot more things that we sometimes, I guess, take for granted. And now we're seeing just what kind of a full-time job that is, being the nucleus of a family. But we're coming together. We're getting it done. Uh, ben is getting his hands dirty as a chef. Starting to cook more things. Uh, I do cook here and there. I've got a couple of great recipes, but... Uh, only once in a while, you know. You don't eat shrimp scampi every day. You don't eat a hoisin stir-fry every day. It's uh, like those meat and potato meals that I really don't... <laughs> I really don't <laughs> prepare that often. So, yeah, it's been interesting. So, you know, I'm a little busier than normal. I just sold my car. There's a video up here. So that was a whole thing. And why I was away, there was a health concern. I think I touched on that earlier, but if I didn't... Yeah, I had to be out of the house for about a month... To get vaccinated and then there was another vaccine concern so I had to house sit some for somebody and uh, <laughs> the first day they were away their well got contaminated the well cap rusted through and sprung a leak we had a torrential downpour for two days and all the runoff water kind of seeped into the well and contaminated it so it's been a whole big mess but I'm back home I got everything ready to go and, uh, yeah, we're going to kick this thing into high gear and get it going again. At least get you in an episode or two every week is my plan, just like before. Anyway, before this gets way too long and boring, I'm going to say goodbye. You all take care. And Ben, Coach Hennessy, and the Orlando Sentinels will be back soon. What do they have in store for the 4-4 four four Huskies with the division-leading Orlando Sentinels? As you can see, we got a close division this year. We are up top by a game over the Explorers and Huskies, and the Bulls, who started off real weak, have come on lately. I think we lost to them. If I remember correctly, I think we lost to them. Let's check the schedule so we can see how things have been going for us. So we started off with a win against the Bulls. No, we won against the Tigers, beat the Bulls again, had a bye beat the Snowhawks, and then we had the Schneid, a loss against the Crusaders, the Eagles, the Miners, just barely beat the Explorers, and we got some toughness coming up ahead. We play the Explorers and the Huskies again later in the season, and these games are going to be tough. They always are. All right, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Take care, everybody. We'll see you next time here on Ben's Corner, hopefully real soon. I'm thinking maybe Monday, maybe tomorrow. I'm going to see how my voice holds up, how everything goes, how busy I am. But at some point next week, the Orlando Sentinels will be back in action. So thanks for joining me on this ride. It's been fun.